Welcome to Computer and Network Security. Today we are going to discuss firewalls. To start off, we're going to talk about the need for firewalls. Uh, internet connectivity is no longer optional for organizations, and individual users within the organization need to have internet access. Uh, there are a lot of benefits to the organization of the users having internet access. However, it also enables the outside world to reach and interact with the local network. Uh, the uh, safest network that exists in the world is one that is not connected to the internet. Um, so we always have threats that are connected uh, to having internet access. Um, a firewall is a nice way to make sure that we have some sort of protection against uh, other users from the internet being able to uh, provide malicious behavior on our network and connect to our computers or even run applications on our computers. There are a few design goals of a firewall. First, all traffic from the inside to the outside uh, and vice versa must pass through the firewall so that the rules of the firewall can be run. Only authorized traffic as defined by a local security policy will be allowed to pass. Uh, and the firewall itself needs to be immune to penetration. Um, that the firewall needs to be on, part, on a hardened system with a secured operating system. Uh, trusted computer systems are usually what host firewalls. We also have hardware firewalls uh, or firewalls that are built into routers, which most of you have personal routers at home, most likely have a firewall built into that. Um, here are four techniques that firewalls use to control access and enforce uh, security policy, service control, direction control, user control, and behavior control. Service control determines the types of internet services that can be accessed inbound or outbound. Uh, direction control determines the direction in which particular service requests may be initiated and allowed to flow through the firewall. So this would be whether or not someone from the outside network would be able to connect to a computer on the inside network. Uh, if that would be allowed through the firewall. User control controls access to a service according to which user is attempting to access it. So maybe certain users have access to certain sites and others do not. Um, and behavior control controls how particular services are used. Uh, the firewall may be able to filter email uh, to eliminate spam or might ha enable external access to only a portion of the information on a local web server. So here are the capabilities of a firewall. Uh, first is that a firewall defines a single choke point uh, that keeps unauthorized users out of the protected network, prohibits potentially vulnerable services from entering or leaving the network, and provides protection from various kinds of IP spoofing and routing attacks. The use of this single checkpoint, uh, choke point simplifies security management because the capabilities are consolidated on a single system or a set of systems. So we only have to worry about uh, changing configuration settings on the firewall as opposed to on multiple systems. A firewall also provides a location for monitoring security related events. So we can write programs for uh, audits and alarms that can be implemented in the firewall. It's also a convenient platform for internet functions that are not security related, such as a network address translation uh, and network management functions that audit or log internet usage. Um, this is often done inside of a firewall also. Uh, if certain sites are being blocked from users of the internal network also, this could be done uh, in the firewall. And then it can also be used as a platform for IPsec. We've talked about IPsec uh, in the past already. And so the firewall can be used to implement uh, virtual private networks and also uh, utilizing IPsec. Okay, some limitations that we have to firewalls. Um, it cannot protect against attacks that bypass the firewall. If you have a certain port, like port 80, open through a firewall, you're not going to be able to block certain traffic on port 80 if all of port 80 is open for uh, users of the internet to be able to get in. Uh, it may also not protect fully against internal threats, uh, such as in this case uh, disgruntled employees 
or an employee who unwittingly cooperates with an external attacker. If you have someone who's already in the trusted network, a firewall is not going to help to protect that one. It also can't guard between wireless against wireless uh, communication between local systems on different sides of the internal firewall. Uh, so if you have a device which is on the inside of the firewall but can also communicate outside of it, such as with uh, smartphones that may be communicating on a wireless LAN locally but also can communicate over the cellular network, then that could be an issue. And then the uh, last port point related to that, um, so a laptop, a uh, smartphone, PDA, or uh, tablet may be used and infected outside the corporate network and then attached and used internally. So bringing uh, something from outside that's already infected into the local network. Uh, here are uh, some different models of uh, firewalls. So uh, up at the top you can see that you have your internal protected network. On the left side we have a firewall which is hopefully keeping out uh, external or untrusted network traffic from making it into the network. There are these uh, four types of firewalls, packet filtering, stateful inspection, application proxy, and circuit level proxy, and we will discuss those on these next few slides. So here is the uh, an example of packet filtering. So this would be a table that's stored inside the router and you see that there are five rules. The first one says that if uh, coming from the outside, so coming into the firewall from an external address to an internal address uh, on port 25, that's going to be permitted. If it's come going out from the, an internal address to an external address on a port greater than 1023, that is also permitted. If it's going out from an internal address to an external address on port 25, that's permitted. If it's coming in from an external address to an internal address on a port greater than 1023, that is permitted. But everything else is going to be denied, so you're not going to be able to uh, pass traffic in either direction on any other port uh, other than those that were allowed with those four rules. Uh, this is typically how your personal firewalls would work if you have them on your own routers at home. Uh, is that you would have all of the ports blocked except for the ones that you explicitly open. So you see that rule E is our catch-all. It says all of the ports are blocked other than uh, these that we have explicitly opened. And that's how uh, you should hopefully have your uh, router set up on your home networks. So uh, a packet filtering firewall um, is very simple. There's really not that much that goes into it. However, we have some uh, weaknesses to it. Um, they don't examine any of the upper layer data so they can't prevent attacks that employ application specific functionality. Um, the second bullet there, because we only have limited information available to the firewall, uh, the logging functionality present in packet filter firewalls is limited. We can log and say here was the source address, here was the destination address, here's the port that it was on, but we can't really say much more uh, than that. Uh, most packet filter firewalls do not support uh, user authentication because this is done uh, at a higher layer than um, at layer 3 or 4. Uh, so the IP address is in layer 3, the port is in layer 4. So it's usually higher than that port uh, that we would have user authentication. Uh, packet filter firewalls are vulnerable to attacks and exploits. And then also due to uh, the small number of variables that are used in access control decisions, uh, improper configurations could uh, make them susceptible to security breaches. Um, so the strengths though, it's easy, simple, and it's transparent to users, it's very fast. So this is often uh, what is used in uh, personal firewalls with the packet filtering. Some attacks that we have, uh, IP address spoofing, uh, if the uh, attacks on firewalls, so if the intruder transmits packets from the outside with a source IP address field containing an address of an internal host, uh, then they've spoofed the IP address. This is easy for us to combat, it just requires just a little bit of code, but we just discard packets that have an inside source address if the packet arrived on an external interface. Uh, the source routing attacks, 
um, is when the source station specifies that the route that a packet should take as it crosses the internet um, in the hopes that this will bypass security measures that do not analyze the source routing information. This is easy also if the router just discards packets that say this is exactly how this packet should travel. And the tiny fragment attack is kind of an interesting one. The intruder uses the IP fragment option to create extremely small, fra small fragments and forces the TCP header information into uh, a separate packet fragment. So uh, kind of interesting there. The countermeasure there to enforce that the first fragment of a packet must contain a predefined minimum amount of the transport header. So you're not just fragmenting to these very, very small uh, 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 packets that are being transmitted and just consuming resources. So here is uh, an example table for a stateful firewall. And you can see that the uh, source address, the destination address going from internal, external, or external, internal. You can see the ports, the destination ports, and that the uh, state was established, uh, the connection was established. Uh, this is a typo right here. Uh, so if you're looking through the book also, that's a typo that should just say like 212. Uh, there is no, um, uh, the first octet of the IP address is not going to be higher than 255. So that's just a uh, typo that we had in the book. Uh, okay, an application level gateway, that was uh, one of the diagrams that we saw earlier. It's also called an application proce uh, proxy. It acts as a relay of application level traffic. Um, the user will contact the gateway using a TCP IP application and the gateway asks the user for the name of the remote host to be uh, accessed. When the user responds, uh, then the gateway contacts the application on the remote host and relays the TCP segment. Uh, containing the application data between the two endpoints. If the gateway does not implement the proxy code for a specific application, the service is not supported and will not be forwarded uh, across the firewall. So this can be used to support only specific features of an application that the network administrator uh, considers acceptable and denies all of the rest. Um, this is rather secure, more secure than packet filters, however, there is uh, additional processing overhead that we have on each one of the connections. Uh, the last uh, type of firewall is the circuit level gateway. Uh, this could be a standalone system or a specialized function performed by an application level gateway uh, for certain applications. Um, it does not permit end-to-end -end TCP connections. Uh, rather, the gateway sets up two TCP connections, one between itself and a TCP user on an inner host, and one between itself and a TCP user on uh, the outside. And then once those two connections are established, the gateway will relay TCP segments from one connection to the other uh, without examining the contents. Uh, the security consists of determining which connections will be allowed. So it doesn't have to allow all of the different connections. So this is an interesting way to do it. We still have uh, a little bit more overhead because now we're having to maintain two TCP connections on uh, the firewall at the firewall uh, when we wouldn't normally have to maintain any uh, with some of the other firewalls uh, that we've talked about there. A host-based firewall is a software module uh, used to secure an individual host. These are available in many operating systems. Um, they uh, filter and restrict the flow of packets. A common location for these firewalls is, uh, is usually on a server. Uh, we're going to talk about personal firewalls on the next slide, so this is different than the Windows firewall or uh, Linux firewalls that you have built into your operating system that you probably use on your own uh, computers. Uh, protection is provi provided here independent of the topology, so regardless of how the network is set up, we still will have protection here. Um, so both internal and external attacks must pass through the firewall if it's attacking uh, this individual host. So we have a little bit more security because uh, users on the internal network are still going to have to bypass this firewall if they are attacking this specific host. Personal firewalls, which we all hopefully are familiar with, and if you're not, you need to become familiar with, you should have a firewall on your own computer. It's going to control the traffic between a personal computer or workstation on one side and the internet or the enterprise network on the other. It can be used in home environments as where it's typically used. It's also used on corporate intranets. Most computers, uh, regardless of whether you're behind your own firewall or not, should have uh, 
um, a, uh, a personal firewall also on the computer. Uh, typically it's a software module. Um, it could be in a router. Most routers that we have nowadays also have personal firewalls on them, so that's also where it uh, could be. You should have that firewall enabled in addition to the firewall that you have on your own computer. Now the primary role is to deny unauthorized remote access to the computer. It's going to be denying all access to the computer uh, remotely unless you explicitly open it up or if you have initiated a request. Um, it can also monitor outgoing activity to detect and block worms and other malware. Here's what one looks like on the uh, Mac operating system. Uh, so you see that it's configured that there are just certain uh, connections there that allow that we allow incoming connections on. We specifically block it on other connections, in this case blocking it on remote desktop connection. That's probably a positive thing to do unless you want to be able to remotely uh, connect to your computer when you are away. That's probably one that you would normally want to block. Okay, yeah, so here is just an example uh, firewall configuration. So you can see remote users coming through the internet. They go through a boundary router. Uh, we have the web server there um, that is in the external DMZ, that's the demilitarized zone, so it's completely open. It's got its own personal firewall on it. You see that little firewall right there, and this is important, but otherwise you want people from the internet to have access to uh, the web server. It then goes through an, an, the external firewall, which gets us into our internal DMZ uh, network. So you see that these, like the email server, the DNS server, these are servers that the internal computers on the network need to be able to access. However, they also need to be able to be accessed from the internet. So we take them through this external firewall, which helps us a little bit and adds a little bit of protection to us, um, bringing it through that. Then we then have the internal firewall, so even more protection that we're going to block even more ports before we get into our internal network, and that's where... Um, these computers should be blocked off almost completely from the outside that there's probably very very little reason that people from the internet would need to be able to access those directly now a web server might be able to access it but they're going to be within the internal network already um, so that's just a basic idea behind firewalls how they work uh, take a look at the papers a lot of good information in those papers the book has a nice chapter also on firewalls take a look at those if you have any questions let me know good luck